Ant pheromones will help protect against ticks. Weather conditions make us leave our homes more often to enjoy the spring sun. But sunny and warm weather stimulates not only us. Ticks become active in parks and meadows. Spring is the peak of their activity. Not every bite of this arachnid causes Lyme disease or another disease. But you need to be careful and use protective measures. In recent research, scientists have determined that ant pheromones may be a good tick repellent. Ticks usually become active at the turn of March and April, but in recent years, due to climate change, they have become active earlier. These small arachnids are considered one of the most dangerous animals in the world. They can transmit many pathogenic microorganisms, and anyone spending time outdoors, even on an allotment plot, home garden or in a city park, is potentially exposed to encountering them. Thanks to ticks, an innocent walk in the forest or park can have unpleasant consequences for us. The most dangerous tick-borne diseases are Lyme disease and tick-borne encephalitis TBE. Lyme disease is more common but easier to detect. Moreover, it is a milder disease, susceptible to effective treatment with antibiotics. According to many experts, KZM is more dangerous. It is caused by a neurotropic virus that is treated only symptomatically. It may cause, among others, inflammation of the brain, meninges, spinal cord or nerve roots. The natural range of ticks may expand as a result of climate change, increasing the need for new repellents. Research from Simon Fraser University, SFU, in Canada suggests that using ant pheromones as a topical repellent or as an environmental barrier may help protect against tick bites. The results and description of the research were published in the journal, Royal Society Open Science. In their work, scientists checked what predators, ants, spiders or beetles, ticks avoid. The research was conducted on Ixode scapularis ticks, which live in North America and can transmit, among others, spirochetes that cause Lyme disease. In Europe, other tick species are responsible for this, mainly the common tick, Ixodes racinus. Ticks like places where people also like to spend time enjoying the weather, said lead author Claire Gooding. When it gets warm and the outdoor sports season begins, there is quite a high risk of encountering ticks, she added. Gooding also admitted that her group decided to look at ants mainly because they are social insects and use a huge range of pheromones to communicate with each other. They are chemically noisy. And in the case of something that perceives the world chemically, it's easy to predict where they will be based on these pheromones, she admitted. The study showed that ticks avoid surfaces where ants have been present, even if the ants have been removed from the surface. These arachnids sense the presence of ants using their senses. They know they're there. They act like they're saying, I'm not going to go there because there might be ants there, Gooding explained. These observations prompted researchers to look at ant pheromones. Their research identified specific chemicals, as well as the two ant glands that produced them. 
Cooperation with chemists resulted in the production of synthetic versions based on ant pheromones. Experiments have shown that ticks also avoid synthetic pheromones. The researchers have already filed a patent application for their discoveries and intend to market a tick repellent based on ant pheromones. First documented case of parthenogenesis in crocodiles. Zoo workers in Costa Rica reported the first case of virginity among crocodiles. A female American crocodile that had been kept in isolation for 16 years laid 14 eggs in her enclosure. Scientists suggest that dinosaurs may have also had similar abilities. A female American crocodile, Crocodilus acutus, living in Parque Reptilandia in Costa Rica apparently got tired of waiting for a mate for 16 years and decided to cope on her own. Zoo employees discovered 14 eggs in her enclosure. Unfortunately, the final effect was not what the crocodile probably expected. The description and results of the research were published in the journal, Biology Letters. Parthenogenesis, also called virgin birth, is a process of reproduction occurring without the participation of a male, consisting in the development of embryos in an egg cell without the participation of a sperm. This phenomenon is not that rare in the animal world and in many species it occurs when there are no males around. This is how birds, some sharks, snakes and lizards, including large Komodo dragons, can reproduce. Now the first case of a captive female crocodile laying eggs has been reported. It took place at Parque Reptilandia in Costa Rica. The local crocodile, which had been living in isolation for the past 16 years, one day laid as many as 14 eggs. What's more, it turned out that half of them contained embryos. However, after three months of incubation, none of the eggs hatched. It was decided to examine the fetuses more thoroughly, including using a specialized program called Parthenogenius. What was obvious was confirmed, i.e. that the genetic material of the young that failed to hatch came only from their mother. Unfortunately, this case also exposes some weaknesses of parthenogenesis. Because the embryos created in this way are not always able to live on their own, or, as in this case, start this life at all. The case of the Costa Rican female crocodile led scientists to conclude that parthenogenesis abilities could be extended to the so-called archosaurs, i.e. primate reptiles. This is a group of evolutionarily advanced reptiles, which also includes crocodiles. Following this trail, we will come to the conclusion that dinosaurs and pterosaurs were probably also able to do this. Whether the young born through virginity will turn out to be healthy varies in different animals. For example, Boa snakes and pythons seem healthy. However, not all snakes are so lucky. If we look at, for example, rattlesnakes, cobras, but also garter snakes and sea snakes, we will find that in their case such embryos are often dead or seriously deformed. Parthenogenesis is also possible in birds and sharks. But the health of their young ones also varies. 
some of them actually turn out to be healthy. However, most of the observed cubs died prematurely anyway, surviving only a few months or at most years. The new organisms created in this way seem to be quite poorly adapted to normal life. By the way, it is worth confronting the view that virginity is a typical method of reproduction for animals kept in captivity. Well, this is not entirely true. Such cases have also been observed among animals living in the wild.